good morning and what a lovely unexpected morning it is BBC had a glitch with its weather system uh, and they were forecasting uh, 18,000 mile an hour winds for today which luckily hasn't happened um, the true forecast was uh, for a fairly brisk uh, north northeasterly uh, and that also hasn't happened yet so that's coming in later on this afternoon so uh, going out for a single tide and the aim of today is to take you through lure fishing from start to finish hopefully from start to fishies but uh, we will see uh, yeah so uh, lure fishing uh, if you're not fishing with bait anything can be classed as lure fishing uh, some top water fishing fishing with poppers um, all sorts really so by lure fishing what I'm talking about is using uh, soft plastics to fish uh, fairly deep water uh, over reefs and wrecks uh, further north they call it shad fishing um, but yeah lure fishing it's what I do a lot of the time it's a brilliant way of fishing it can catch all sorts of fish um, primary culprits for this area pollock bass cod but I've also caught uh, mackerel pouting all sorts of brass um, spur dog uh, I've even had a turbot uh, lure fishing so uh, there are a couple of different techniques which uh, I'll explain when uh, when we're out there hopefully get out there um, but uh, really lure fishing uh, the planning and the preparation starts at home so uh, I'm going to cut to a bit at home and then come back so on dry land for me um, to enjoy fishing the most it is uh, better to get as much prepared as you can you don't want everything prepared because you don't know uh, exactly what you're going to be faced with um, so um, yeah this is what I do on land um, before I go fishing and particularly before I go lure fishing so for lure fishing first of all rod and reel the reel oh, let's go for the rod first um, this is um, Shakespeare ugly stick they are not expensive at all but they are great little rods this is uh, 12 to 20 pound class which means that there is plenty of bend on it um, which is important um, but it's also got a good bit of strength to it as well you need a bit of um, bend on it because if you lure fish in for pollock for example and they dive down to the bottom you need that cushioning that's going to um, just um, cushion the force of that and not take it out on on the line um, so 12 to 20 that does the job for me for the type of fishing I do in sort of up to 70 meters of water um, 12 to 20 is absolutely ideal the reel is um, a pen fathom two-speed lever drag um, the lever drag is is brilliant just more or less um, drag on it easily adjustable and the two-speed just allows you extra cranking power should you need it and that release is easy with just the turn of that little knob there you could go lighter and the trend particularly the slow pitch jigging and the like is to go much lighter um, that's fine um, but I don't like to carry too much kit I like to carry what I need to do the job um, without um, being too excessive if you had one that was just for slow pitch jigging just for lure fishing you could go class down but then if you wanted to target um, bigger pollock ling something like that um, then you might need a bigger rod um, but for me the 12 to 20 does it all and this reel um, this is the 15 size again is is a perfect size it's nice and light it holds enough line um, and yeah just does the job very well I've had this years I tend to have my kit until it breaks down and then get another one so um, this model is now superseded by a nice gray one um, or, um, steel one rather um, but they're brilliant reels for their money you can spend a fortune on reels um, and no doubt the ones um, that you do spend you know five hundred thousand pounds on are lovely but this does the job at um, a sensible price for me the line particularly for lure fishing you want a nice thin line um, the thickness of the line um, determines the drag in the water which determines the angle that the tide's going to take it away from from you so um, a nice thin line is important um, Barky Whiplash do a nice thin line um, this is 40 pounds and a really thin diameter for that 
and on the end of that I have a snap-on swivel. All of my swivels are cox and roll, nice and strong and last forever. So um, the first thing you've got to do is tie that swivel on and you can't use all knots with braid because it'll slip. Um, so I'll show you the knot I use for that. Right, uh, so some knots are stronger than other. I'm going to use this to simulate the hook, swivel, whatever. Some knots are stronger than other. Um, the key basically is if it goes once through an eye, then whatever force is put on the standing side is also put on the running side. If it goes twice through an eye, the amount of force it takes to hold the running part is much less than then he's on the uh, standing part. So if we just have a knot that goes once through the eye, and let's just do a simple half hitch, that pulls through easily. If we have a knot that goes twice through the eye, and we do a simple half hitch, that, just a simple half hitch, has locked it. So twice through the eye makes so much difference to the strength of the knot. So the knot I use um, is a grinner, which is twice through the eye. And then we just go once, twice, three times, four times, five times through the loop. Give yourself a bit more than that. Pull it all tight. It does take a bit of sort of cinching down and also with any line you have to moisten it with a bit of with a bit of saliva um, but yeah that is um, a grinner knot really really strong really really strong um, a good knot for um, uh, mono uh, sorry for um, braid and it's twice through the eye so it is super strong so you've got your rod you've got your reel you've got your line you got to snap swivel at the end of it um, what do we put on the end of that? So I keep um, in my tackle bag, just in one of the lure boxes, I keep a few of these running ledgers um, pre-tied. I'll show you how to tie them in a minute, but um, I keep them secured in there with a little bit of blue tack so they don't spring out and go everywhere. So the running ledger is uh, is brilliant and that has a swivel at one end, a bead, the boom, another bead and another swivel. So that end goes on to your snap swivel. On the bottom of the boom you put a lead on it. I prefer the cannonball leads because if they drop into a bit of a rock or if you wreck fishing into a bit of a wreck, there's more chance that it's gonna pull out. The place that I buy them from, they do six ounce and 10 ounce in Cannonball, but if you want an eight ounce, it's got to be that shape. So you will see me using those as well, because eight ounce, six and eight ounces are the best sort of weights for um, generally the tides that I fish. Um, and. Um, yeah, eight is only available in uh, in that size. So there it is with the lead on it and that's free to slide. These are uh, brilliant because um, what happens is, if you imagine it, the lead sat on the seabed and you've got your hook line this side, you've got direct contact with any fish pulling um, at the line without having to move the lead. If you are, if you lure fish and it's higher up in the water, you've still got the same thing where this fish isn't doesn't is not physically having to pull the whole lot along. You've got direct contact with whatever's on the hook length, and because braid is so sensitive, you can feel exactly what's going on. So that's why I use the running ledger, and you can use that for all sorts of things. You can tie um, a hook length onto there for place fishing, for standard bait fishing. Um, sometimes I'll just cut that 
swivel off and put a 200 pound trace on if you're fishing for ling or something toothy like that. So, um, tie in that. Um, I use, I, I generally use amnesia, which is low memory, meaning that if you put a coil in it, the coil soon drops out. Um, because it stays in my tackle box, all coiled up, sorry, I'm by the road. Um, because it stays in the tackle box, all coiled up with a bit of blue tack to keep them tidy. Um, I don't want those coils to stay for long. It doesn't really matter because there's quite a bit of weight going on there. Um, it goes down like that. Um, so it straightens that bit of line. So it really it doesn't matter what sort of line you put on there. Um, but my main line, the braid is 40 pounds. I tend to use um, uh, 35 pound for uh, this bit of the running ledger um, and I'll show you how to tie it. So here's one that I've nearly prepared. So tie the swivel on, I'll come on to that in a minute, with a bead, poke the line through the boom, another bead and then tie the swivel on the other end. And it's a really simple knot which you're not going to be able to see with that. So back to this. The knot's called a palomar, and it really is very simple. Give yourself enough, enough line, loop it, that goes through the eye, and you can use this for hooks as well as swivels. Tie an overhand knot. The end goes through the other end of the swivel, just around the swivel. Pull it all tight. Again, with uh, with the line, you're going to need a bit of moisture on there. That has got two bits of line then along the hook, so it gives, makes it nice and strong. Trim that end, and you've got a really easy to tie, simple, very strong knot. So, on the line itself. A loop through a simple overhand knot over the other end of the swivel just give that a little bit of moisture pull it down nice and tight trim the loose end and there you go little running ledger tied. So we've now got the rod, the reel, the line, the running ledger with a lead on it and a swivel at the other end, what we're going to put on the other end of that. Well for lure fishing it's dead simple, um, we're going to put a lure on it. Uh, so my lure box, I carry uh, various different types of lures. Um, lure fishing is all about confidence of the lure. Um, so um, you've got to be confident with your gear and got to be confident that the lure is going to catch fish. Um, and you will find in different areas people say different things and it's purely because somebody had a good day on a rhubarb and custard. Everybody started fishing with rhubarb and custard so in that area rhubarb and custard are what's catch fish. Well, rhubarb and custard are what catches fish in that area because that's what everybody's fishing with. Um, and it's the same, some, some places favour white. Um, it's also similar for um, uh, the hook length for lure fishing as well. Lots of people um, in Plymouth, for example, fish with extremely long hook lengths, you know, sort of 16, 20 feet. And I'm sure that's all based on the same thing. Um, I reckon if you cut down to an eight foot hook length, which is what I use, six to eight feet, um, they would do just as well. Uh, so the thing about lures, it's confidence. So I, I use good quality lures. Um, I use them from uh, Lazy Lures, uh, the Bomb Squad. They've got a bit of weight to them. I like uh, Sidewinder, like the um, Rattlebacks. They've got a bit of weight to them. Um, I also like using uh, just uh, 
D limitations, which are very light. I think this one's by Storm. That one's got no weight to it. And one I haven't tried yet, because I haven't had the conditions, but I'm really itching to use it, is the new um, Renaissance um, lure from uh, Lazy Lures. You can tell just in the breeze that's blowing today that that's got some movement on it. In water, that's going to be going to be really good. I just haven't had a chance to use it. I'll talk about it more when, I'm, when we're on the water, but what I find is that um, if the tide is not particularly strong, this type of eel that's not, not weighted tangles up around the main line, even with the boom on. Um, something that's got a, 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 got a bit of weight to it um, doesn't tangle so easily. When the tide's flowing a little bit stronger, these are brilliant and the, uh, well I'm assuming they haven't, haven't used it yet, but the, the, the action of them really frees up um, and because the tide is, is pulling them back you know, quite strongly then they don't tangle up around the main line. Um, so yeah, that, that's the lure. Um, so whatever lure you're using um, to attach the lure to the swivel that's on the end of your running ledger, I use fluorocarbon. Um, I have that, I don't know if you can see this, on my tackle bag. So the three spools in there, 15 pound, 25 pound, and 30 pound. If I'm trying to catch like very shy bass or something like that, then I'll go for the 15 pounds. Um, if you're catching sort of larger um, pollock and if you think there might be some ling on the ground, uh, it's not so much the weight of the fish, it's the, uh, it's the teeth and the sharp bits that are inside their mouth parts. So you need something that's gonna um, cover the abrasion really well. So go for the, uh, for the higher lengths. Um, fluorocarbon, um, because it's invisible in water. Um, so um, I, I tend to use um, fluorocarbon for that uh, and I'll show you how I tie it onto the swivel. Okay so there's my swivel, so the knot I use to tie it onto the swivel is a really simple um, half blood knot and um, anybody my age particularly who was fishing as a boy will know how to tie one of these, really simple, one's through the eye, high, eye of the hook five or six times around there, through the eye, or tucked half blood knot I suppose, and then back through that loop and tighten it all up, which this paracord won't tighten up very well, but that, that's, how, that's how you tie it. On the line itself, so, once through the eye. One, two, three, four, five. Five or six turns will do. And then through that loop, back through that loop. A little bit of moisture. Drop the camera. <laughs> cinch it all down, pull it nice and tight and trim the end. I'll tell you why in a minute that uh, I just do the blood loop for uh, or the blood knot for that side. And then the other end, six to eight feet, we're going to put the lure on there. So the knot I'm going to use for that is a Palomar knot. So we tie an overhand knot through the eye of the lure, through the overhand knot, three turns on the standing part, one, two, three, back through the overhand knot, and then pull all of that tight. And what that gives you, you can trim that off, what that gives you is a loop that won't tighten so that the lure can swim freely without it being pinched up like that and have to move the line. So it just gives you a loop that doesn't tighten.
let's just do that on the uh, <coughs> on the lure so just an overhand knot through the eye through the overhand knot three times around the line one two three back through the eye of the overhand knot try and moisten it without dropping the camera this time Cinch it down nice and tightly, snip the free end, and there's your loop, allowing the lure to just work freely. It's quite a quick and easy knot to tie, and if you if your hook length to start with is, is fairly long, you've got time to you've got length on the line to snip it off and, and re-tie. Um, I've never tried a clip. Um, the point behind using fluorocarbon is um, it's invisible in water and the point behind using uh, the Rapala knot is so that the lure has freedom of movement. So it seems sort of counterintuitive to me to use a clip but if anybody has got experience of using a clip to change them easy um, I'd be interested to know the details. Right hook length um, I use six to eight feet and that seems to work for everything I've, I've heard people talk about um, different lengths for different tides um, the only thing I would say is that um, there's two different types of lure fishing and I'll go through it um, in practice on the boat if you hop in it across the bottom then if, if, if you're on a, a charter boat which is um, quite high got quite high freeboard you can point the rod down to the water lift the rod up so you've probably got about four meters of travel something like that if you're on a small boat like mine the rods starting horizontal and you've only got about two meters of travel so if you are hopping it along the bottom there's no point in having a massive long hook trace because you lifting that up two meters at a time if the if the lure is 12 feet over there that going up and down two meters at a time is, is, is not going to affect that at the other end um, so you, you you do need a shorter hook length in that case I principally use the retrieve method which again I'll, I'll go through on the boat um, and six to eight feet seems to work well because you, you're lifting the lure up um, 20 or 30 turns off the bottom and it, it follows the hook um, if I am hopping it across the bottom as such I will tend to use the retrieve method anyway just do a smaller amount of turns on the reel um, so there we are we are ready to go let's put that into practice and get back on the boat still heading down the river so that that is the uh, the tackle and the rig I have also got um, so the, the lure rod is set up. I've also got uh, some mackerel feathers set up, and I've got uh, my uh, spinning rod with a lure on it, just in case uh, I see anything on the surface. So, ideal conditions: a light southwesterly. We've got a northeasterly. Uh, a step tide building up to spring tide. We are bang on neeps. It's not quite the worst conditions. They were a couple of days ago when we were heading towards Neeps, so the tides are getting smaller. So the tides from today are getting bigger. So it's bang on Neeps. However, as I've said many times before, if I'm free and the weather's decent, I'm gonna go regardless of the conditions. If I don't catch fish, I don't catch fish. That's, uh, that's one of those things. I like being out in the fresh air. I like being on a boat and uh, sort of fishing uh, yeah, I do like fishing, obviously, um, but uh, it, it sort of justifies being out in the open air and on a boat. So if I can get out... If 
on a morning like this, in conditions like this, I'm gonna go. I'm not a commercial fisherman, they're all tucked up in bed at home because um, it's not ideal fishing conditions and they don't want to waste fuel. I want to enjoy my day and I intend to do that whether uh, I catch fish or not. So I've got a cup of tea on the go, I've had a bacon roll. We are heading out. And when I get out there, I'll uh, see if the final bit of the uh, jigsaw is in place. So um, the best winds, we haven't got that. The best tides, we haven't got that. Uh, and clarity in the water is, uh, is also perfect. So um, uh, that, that's what we need. It should be nice and clear this time of year. It's not the time of year where you're gonna get plankton uh, blooms and, uh, and that sort of thing. So uh, it should be nice and clear, but lure fishing is primarily um, a sight thing. Um, obviously fish have other senses as well, uh, lateral line etc, um, but um, if they can see something that they want to eat then uh, you, you stand a better chance of, uh, of being successful when you lure fishing. So let's get out there and see. So I've come out onto uh, a reef. Um, the conditions are it is fine, there's a big swell from that low pressure system that's out in the Atlantic. Um, <coughs> and the, the northeasterly is blowing up a bit of a chop, so it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit snotty. If I was going onto a wreck this time of year, I'd want to go further out. Uh, so I've come into a reef because it's a little bit closer in. And uh, lure fishing could not be simpler. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, drop these mackerel feathers down. Um, and I'm doing that for several reasons. One, I love to catch mackerel, I love to catch them, I love to eat them, they're fantastic for bait. And the other reason is that um, if there are predatory fish around and they see mackerel feathers, they might think that's um, you know, uh, uh, a, sh a shoal of small bait fish and come, uh, come up from my lure. So uh, you've seen the rig and I'm using a Sidewinder Rattleback, a four inch one. Um, mainly because they haven't been in stock where I buy my lures from uh, and they are now in stock. I haven't used one for ages, so I quite fancy them. <coughs> quite fancy giving them a go. The other reason is that the water is a little bit dark. Um, it's, it's not coloured or anything, but it's not, uh, it's, not, it's not crystal clear. So I've gone for a brighter lure. Uh, so, the technique couldn't be easier. First thing, make sure the drag's okay. Just, just pull it along. If the line's digging into your spool, it's too tight. If you can pull it off too easy, it's too loose and you just get the feel for what's, what's about right, really. Keep your thumb on the spool so it doesn't tangle on the way down, just let it down at a gentle pace. And then there are two methods, really, principally, that you can use. Um, so you, you can either hop it along the bottom. If I was gonna do that, I would have a shorter trace on it. Um, and it's just literally a case of, we're on the bottom, lift it up and let it down. And you can do that quicker or slower. The times I'd use that were if I was on um, a brittle star bank and I was after cod. Um, they're obviously feeding on brittle stars, which is on the bottom. So there's no point in having your lure 10 meters up from the bottom. Um, And it's worked, we've got one. <laughs> we've got something small. Um, I'm not on a brittle star bank and I wasn't really expecting to catch anything. So I suspect I picked up a pouting. So that's method one. We'll have a look and see what this is. Uh, and then I'll show you the second method. There's no need with any fishing to wind up frantically. If you've got a bend in the rod, that fish is not going to come off. Unlikely to come off. 
the only time you have to wind fast is if you've got something on that's swimming upwards and it um, and it takes the bend out of the rod. Drop one, as predicted, a little pouting. Which has released itself anyway and gone. <laughs> There we are. So that was really just demonstrating the method that I'm not using today. Um, I'm not on Brittle Star Bank. I'm not particularly expecting cod. I might be the odd one swimming past, but if they're not on Brittle Stars, they're feeding on sand eels and stuff like that. So they're not necessarily um, hard on the bottom. So I'm hoping for a bass out here. Um, there might be pollock around as well. So the se second method that's on the bottom is just the retrieve method. And that is simply just winding up gently. That was a bite then, I don't know if you saw it. So the trick then is just to continue winding. That was a, a, a pouting bait on, near the bottom. And then it depends on the depth of water. I'm in 40 meters of water here. So I'm just gonna wind it up 20 turns or so. Back down to the bottom. And it's just a case of um, 0.8 of a knot of drift here, just a case of uh, varying the retrieve speed, varying the number of turns, and hopefully seeing where the fish are. So then it's such an easy, enjoyable way of fishing. You don't need a lot of gear, you obviously don't have to rely on bait. Bird activity over there. You just need a few different types of lures, which you may want to change uh, along along the way. That rattleback is obviously working for a pout. <laughs> um, one fish, one bite. This is a long reef, I've got a, a decent lot of features to, uh, to drift over. We're only drifting at half a knot now, so not an ideal speed for uh, lure fishing. I suspect quite a bit of that is, uh, is wind drift. You can also vary the techniques, so I'm on the bottom there. Or mix the techniques if you like. So you can give it a couple of nods up and down on the bottom, wind it up 10 turns. Try it again. Anything can be effective, just varying it. And uh, like I said in the uh, in the bit at home, it's all about confidence. I prefer just dropping and retrieving. I think that uh, simulates more just uh, the natural movement of fish. If you're uh, if you're jigging up and down, you. Um, sort of imitating a fish in trouble then which can attract fish but you're more onto sort of slow pitch jigging rather than lure fishing and uh, slow pitch jigging and lure fishing of, of that technique oh there we are so there's a fish so again no no striking just lift lift the rod into it this is a better fish actually certainly not certainly not pouting and then just wind gently to keep that bend on the rod Well, despite the conditions, the east wind and the tide, the lure is doing its job. It's such a good way of fishing. I'd say this is a reasonable pollock.
And there it is. A nice reef pollock. Just hooked in the top of the lip with that sidewinder. There we are. And because we're only in 40 meters of water and we wound it in gently, there's no barotrauma there. You could take a fillet off that, um, but I'll put this one back. You can tell it's a reef fish over, uh, over a wreck fish because it's in really nice condition. It's not been scratched or mauled, all its fins are good. Um, it's just been swimming about trying to catch sand eels. There we are. Uh, there's, so there's two reasons to put that fish back. One because I could. Um, but the other is, um, from the, these inshore reefs, the smaller fish, I don't think they taste that brilliant. Um, out on the wreck, if you can get something six, seven pounds, that sort of size, then yes, fine. The, um, they've got a bit of flavour to them. So if I catch one of that sort of size, I will take it home. Um, but anything smaller, if I can return it, I will. There's the mackerel. Oh no, <laughs> and something's taken the lure. <laughs> Very nice eating mackerel. Let's just pop those in the bucket for a minute. Right, let's see what we've got here. You don't often get that, something taking the lure when it's when you're not doing anything with it. Well just the movement of the boat, I suppose. This, whatever it is. Not huge, but I don't know, it's come to life now. And another just very nice, just lip hooked Pollock. Again, nice condition reef fish, no barotrauma. Straight back down. And we've got two very nice mackerel, which I'll sort out. Well, that was two minutes of madness. Two nice mackerel and another pollock return. Let's get the lure back down. I'll put the feathers back down again. Um, yeah, we've still got a bit more reef to go yet. A lot of small fish down there, which is um, good. The reef is healthy. Closer to the bottom, quite often, you know, on the first few turns, we're just getting little rattles as uh, pouting, presumably maybe pork cod uh, nibbling at the tail of the lure. Something's having a little go on the way down there. Braid is amazing, you can just feel everything that's going on. Especially with that uh, running ledger as I tried to explain, there it is. Yeah, with that running ledger, so 
the fish isn't having to you're not having to uh, feel the fish's weight that's come off that's something small you're not having to fish the, feel the fish's weight through the lead you just got direct contact with the uh, with the lure so if you're thumbing it down as you should be instead of it going down smoothly you could just feel something was pecking at it on the way down I didn't know till I woke up this morning whether I was coming out today. The weather forecast has been so up and down. Um, I look at several things that I've, me I've mentioned before. Uh, I look at the BBC, although they've had their glitch. Um, so I did download XC Weather to see what they were they were looking at. I look at the actual weather from the uh, Coast Watch station at Prawl. Uh, the synoptic chart to give me an idea and the um, inshore waters and the shipping forecast and it was between force 2 and force 5 okay. force 2 is dreamy probably about what we've got force 5 not nice at all so last night I went to bed it was a starry sky I did have a look outside you could hear the breeze rustling in the trees which is never good on an evening um, but yeah, woke up this morning virtually still and thought, well, can't miss an opportunity. Kick myself if stayed at home and it stayed nice. <laughs> and as a bonus for a, a northeast wind day with slack tides, we've already caught some fish and I've got a couple of mackerel to take out. Brilliant. Hopefully we can improve on that as the day goes on. More activity on the mackerel feathers, but this feels heavy. Hopefully it's a string. <laughs> There's the reason for it feeling heavy. A foul hook pouting. Don't like to foul hook things, but there's not a lot you can do about it. It goes lively enough. Um, yeah, they do recover well. They can see, you don't like to foul hook things, um, but you see fish that have damaged themselves on wrecks. You see ones that have had cuttlefish scars. You see ones where a seals had a scratch at them. Um, yeah, and they, they all seem to be fine. So one little hook wound, well, you wouldn't choose it. I don't think it does them too much harm and that one's gone back very healthy. Those uh, sidewinder rattlebacks that I've got on at the moment, as with the uh, Lazy Lures Bomb Squad, they've got a bit of weight to them. And I find in these slacker conditions, they're better for keeping tangle free. Um, particularly if you know, like I did then, just left the rod for a minute um, while, uh, while I looked at the mackerel feathers. Something like the um, Joey Sand Eels, which I like, but they're not, they've got very little weight to them in these slacker tides. They tend to uh, wrap up around the main line a little bit. Um, so I find them better on the stronger tides when the tides are slack like this, something with a bit of weight on. Hopefully stays untangled. Doesn't tangle quite so readily. You can normally feel that again with the braid. Um, I can't really explain what it feels like. It just feels different to when it's, uh, when it's not tangled. The, um, the lure's coming up sideways and you can feel the difference in the weight. First of the year if I can get it. Well there's an unexpected turn up on mackerel feathers. Nice size squid. There 
it is, it is squid season and I was perhaps going to give it a go later with some squid, squid lures but uh, there we are, one on mackerel feathers, brilliant. You don't often get the ratchet going off on the feathers. This isn't a mackerel. There's a load of bird activity over there, too far away to show you on the camera and too far away to have a look really, but I wonder if there's a tuner about. That's why it felt heavy. Big old scad that's also knotted itself up. Just change position on the reef slightly. Mackerel feathers still out. Just trying a different area. Um, that that air, first area was good, but the tide's not uh, not picking up at all, um, and it's just lots of small pout. Um, pollock fine. Uh, so yeah, just try a different area. See if there's uh, any other fish about. That breeze is starting to pick up a little bit, so I'll keep an eye on that because uh, heading into it on the way home. perfectly fine heading into it just takes a little bit longer and I am out on a single tide so I don't want to spend them out on the mud waiting for the next tide to come back in well, I've had a breeze made on drift on this new area of reef with um, I'm not saying that <laughs> I was gonna say with no luck at all <laughs> Um, yeah, and I was going to give up and <laughs> just go and see if I could uh, catch some mackerel to go with the two that are in the uh, in the igloo, and then something's taken it. There you go. You never know with fishing. I don't like to call it because I'm usually wrong, but this feels a bit coddish. Get that for a beauty of a John Dory. Massive mouth on them with that lure tucked in there. Can you hear it grunting too? Give me a minute, I need my pliers for that, it's quite deep down. There it is, quite possibly one of the strangest fish in the sea. But, amazing eating, that one's coming home. Right, despite catching that really nice fish here, I think I am going to uh, um, just head to a rougher bit of the reef with the mackerel feathers and see if I can get uh, yeah, a couple more to make a mackerel meal out of it. See you there. Right, give this a try. Pick up another few mackerel quickly before this wind gets up. Hopefully.
something's on there, but it's not fighting too mackerel-like. However, I was wrong with the John Dory. I hope I was wrong with this. <laughs> Guess what? That is spitting all over the place. I don't know if you can see it. See the spit coming up. Another squid. <laughs> Smaller one this time, but that will do very nicely. Thank you. Very nice eating size. Found a lively little area of the reef, that's for sure. Top off the species list. Really colourful male cuckoo wrasse. Wind forecast between force two and five seems quite accurate because it was a two to start with. It's definitely a good five now. So, uh, I've just come in a good way. I'm only, uh, I'm only a mile out from Salcombe now with uh, a cross sea to uh, tackle on the way in. So I'm going to have 10 minutes here trying to find those elusive last two mackerel and then back in for a clean up. The last two mackerel are not coming, so um, I'm going to have to call it a day, I think, with this wind picking up even more. So, uh, yeah, I'll head back in and I'll uh, have a word with you in the shelter of the harbour. A bit less wind, hopefully. See you. Well, there we are, in the uh, relative shelter of the harbour for a a clean up and a wash down. Uh, so that's lure fishing. It's a lovely way of fishing. It's simple. You don't need much stuff. If you're fishing on a reef like today, um, you don't lose much stuff. I didn't lose any gear today. Wreck fishing, slightly different, but it's not the same as bait fishing where you are inevitably going to lose, lose stuff. Um, yeah, you rarely lose stuff when you're lure fishing on a wreck at all and, and certainly uh, nothing on a reef. On the reef as well, it's easy. I think I'd had five drifts today. Then I was fishing for about three hours, something like that. Uh, so yeah, um, th I'd appreciate there are expert fishermen out there, and certainly fishermen that are better than me, and some people that watch the commercial or ex-commercial uh, that are uh, that, that are better than me. It's not really meant as a tutorial, just showing you how I do it. And I know there's a lot of people that watch that are just getting, getting into boating and getting into fishing. So uh, hope you can pick something up from that um, for, uh, for, uh, for the way I do it. Um, not the best wind, in fact, probably the worst wind uh, and pretty much the worst tide for it. So uh, uh, I'm really pleased with, uh, with with the day actually. Um, so for the lure fishing uh, pollock, which I could have could have kept, but like I said, they're not the tastiest. Those uh, sort of uh, inshore smaller fish, but they were big enough to take a fillet off. However, they all return nicely. One small pout um, I've kept for bait. Um, 
uh, and the John Dory. Uh, uh, that makes lovely eating, and that's a really good sized fish, so that's brilliant. Uh, and then a couple of surprise squid on the uh, on the mackerel feathers, a scad for bait, um, and a couple of uh, mackerel as well, three mackerel to take home. So um, I might even try the scad actually. Um, I've got it straight on ice, so uh, I've had uh, um, several comments that they're uh, that they're good to eat. Um, albeit probably a little bit bony, but um, yeah, I might, I might give that a try as I didn't catch very many mackerel. Um, so yeah, nice mixed bag of fish. Oh, that really uh, colourful cuckoo rice as well. Um, so uh, nice mixed bag of fish uh, given the conditions. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed uh, the little experience of lure fishing. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.